Ministry is working out of a town called Ein Elven, lovely town. You know, welcome if you have a chance to visit. And my role uh, in Phillips is primarily to focus on the enterprise security, primarily on the enterprise security compliance management, and uh, also Phillips is a member of Jericho Forum. My name is Bob West uh, with Echelon One. We're a uh, startup analyst firm uh, comprised of CISOs. And uh, up until about a year and a half ago, I worked uh, primarily with banks over the last 20 years in large uh, corporations, uh, the last 12 years in security, and uh, before that in land, wind, design, implementation, and management. I'm Steve Whitlock with the Boeing Company. Uh, my role is our long-term security strategy and overall security architecture. My name is Justin Samani from Verisign. I run the information security group at Verisign uh, to protect things like PKI and making sure that you're able to uh, use your certificates in a manner that actually works. Is this a year PKI? What's that? Is this a year PKI? There's only one PKI. <laughs> uh, my name is Michael Hamlin. I'm the chief security engineer of Resilience. Uh, my job is finding uh, new and inventive security technologies to put on high availability appliances. And uh, by night, a part of the research group Conchoto that runs the hacking competition at DEF CON. Okay, very simple. Here's the, uh, if you can't read it down there, it says, what, what would constitute a fair and realistic demonstration system? In other words, if we want to produce something, a set of rules, a set of conditions, a set of criteria for the competition, what would you need to take back into your corporations and businesses need to see demonstrated as part of that system? And uh, we'll get the panel to kick off and then we'll open it up to the floor. And this is, this is very much, you know, your, your your discussion, so it's what you want to see. Feel free to challenge if people say, you know, if, if what you think people say is rubbish, I wouldn't want to see that, or doesn't go far enough, or anything else. Here's your chance to uh, say what you think. So, um, who wants to kick off? So, I, I think one of the things that I would like to see is when we take the multiple layers of problems within a typical application from end user to data integrity to data management to network layout to um, how we actually secure those tunnels to third parties, et cetera. It's actually picking an application that comprise of all those problems and really having that be the, uh, the environment in which we look at. So when we look at your typical, um, like the example that you were given uh, in regards to PeopleSoft, I think it was PeopleSoft. Um, so you actually have multiple layers of problems that go into there, and I don't think you really even talk about the data protection model of it, as opposed to some of the uh, network connectivity issues. But I, I think that would really demonstrate the multiple layers of uh, solutions that need to be driven in most companies that, that have those problems today. Yeah, it, 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 so I'm, I'm looking at this from uh, a garden variety uh, end user in, in a corporate environment. I'm thinking, so okay, so I, I need to have LAN access. I need to have email. There, there's uh, internet access, and then potentially access to uh, applications X, Y, and Z. And that that I don't think would be relevant because you you, you just don't know, you know what, what the specialized application. Okay, so might st be. standard business applications, email, calendaring, potentially IM. Right. Right. Um, and then Word or or word processing yeah. on top of that spreadsheet, yeah. Yeah, probably typical, with yeah, typical office automation applications. Okay. So, so I think going back to what Justin was saying, I think uh, it, in keeping in mind, so uh, assuming that I'm out there and this has to be supported on, on the internet uh, outside of uh, the infrastructure, being able to understand okay, how, how can I control this stuff and, and have the right level of integrity <laughs> in, in each of the, the components of, uh, of the sandbox. Okay. Henry. Yeah, this is uh, Henry. Um, in terms of what would constitute a fair and realistic demonstration system, um, I would put on my, let's say, uh, compliance officer hat and then basically look at it and say, if this system was basically brought to Philips, you know, what do I actually, you know, what type of issues that I may have to use the system to solve? Or 
what actually more risk that the system will increase or actually reduce. So I think it's more of a, of a risk criteria that I will try to look at this. And in particular, uh, I don't know how many of you are actually working with the auditors, uh, IT auditors. Uh, to, to a great extent, I very often look at the auditors as a way of uh, a business uh, measurement or performance measurement that they come in and they measure how well is an organization doing. Now, you know, there's a, a sort of a love-hate relationship always with the auditors. And I would actually also put on my sort of audit head to, th to think that if we have the system from a control perspective, uh, is it basically bringing more control or less control? And then, if it's less in control, how do we actually analyze the situation to, to basically come up and say, you know, in the past audits, you have a control environment. Now, it appears that from some view that the controls are less, how do we actually explain the situation uh, with a certain rationale of, of, in this case, basically more of a risk assessment to the auditor to say the system is actually justifiable because of these reasons? Thank you. So, <laughs> so I, 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 I have a little bit of a pain. Uh, being a former auditor with, uh, with Pricewaterhouse and now being on the other side of the fence where not only are we being audited, but we actually manage the internal <coughs> audit functions. When we look at the series of controls that you know, uh, the PCOB drives down for ITGCC, et cetera, there's a lot that's really missing. Um, it's really the, the baseline bar of where all the companies should be. However, if we're building something that, in my mind, should withstand an onslaught of actually intelligent individuals, then I think of you know, malware. How do you actually protect about that? How do you actually do detailed analysis over um, input parameters? And all those things are, are not generally um, looked at or reviewed under a general controls perspective for IT. So I, I think the, the, the solution that I would like to see is how do we encapsulate all those major issues that we have a problem with, both network, uh, personality traits, what have you, um, into an application that it really can withstand intelligent individuals. Yeah, in, in my mind, I see it as really two part. One, there's a threat model, and then there's really requirements of supportability. So what we have in typical companies is that it needs to be widely disparate, um, not only from a support perspective. You have multiple individuals, you have multiple organizations, um, be it from a system administrative level or a development level, et cetera. Um, you also have different attack models that go on top of the application as well. So it's, it's pretty much layered in my mind what it actually needs to accomplish in order to be successful. So actually this brings up a very interesting uh, discussion because what we're really looking at, and let's say a, a fair and realistic demonstration system. Now part of the uh, Jericho form principle is that it's not gonna be one size fit all. So I think it's important to understand and maybe part of the criteria is to lay out the different scenarios that we're looking at and maybe describe them in a more of a business type of scenarios, and then sort of rate them or evaluate them based on the different business scenarios. So in that case, you could get a fair view of different perspectives depending upon what scenario you're actually, uh, uh, you know, analyze the situation with. Um, I want to add a couple qualities of what's already been said. Uh, Paul mentioned earlier that we have uh, more identities uh, from non-Boeing people in our system than, than Boeing people, and the ratio is about 125,000 uh, Boeing identities to about 160,000 non-Boeing identi identities from several thousand companies. So I would be interested in the quality of scaling, both quantity and differences, I guess, between uh, very different enterprises. I realize something like this probably wouldn't itself scale, but it would have to demonstrate the potential to scale. Um, 
when you get large numbers, we have about 50,000 business partners, but they're not all electronic, um, although a lot of them are. But there are a lot of things that work very well with a few companies or s in the small that fall apart uh, large scale. As an example, we are building an, uh, our own authorization system that we started because we couldn't find anything workable in the marketplace. There are a few potential companies now, but uh, that's enforcing export regulations for the data for the 787, which we're currently designing. And that plane is being designed in different countries around the world by different companies. It's sort of a joint effort. Uh, Mitsubishi, for example, are designing a large part of the wings. And we run into weird export issues with that, where we used to just have to say, no, you can't see this entire system. The system we're building will actually allow certain people, based on their credentials, uh, their, in the US, US person status, which is sort of citizenship, but not exactly. Um, and the exact piece of data return an answer down to the granular level of, of, a, of a piece of data or a field out of the database and audit everything as well, or supply the audit records. I would actually like to go back to what Henry was saying, and I think part of the problem that we need to define right now is what are those use cases and requirements that we would have that really define out what this application would make of? Okay, from the floor, go. Um, no, that, that, that's hopefully what you're contributing to at the end of the day. Um, the assumption so far that it will be a, hopefully a set of business problems um, which will constitute mul multiple devices. And the, the sort of bu no, we're building certainly business systems. I don't know about business process behind there. I mean, this the th the thinking, especially behind the large amount of money that's attached to this, is that uh, there needs to be some fairly serious work gone into this. Um, so it's not just a question of throwing you know a box or two together with a, with a few protocols behind it and saying, well, I, you know, I now have a secure system that potentially might scale. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at probably at least five or six boxes all doing different functions with laptop um, capable of accessing it with public access with private access um, and probably some form of SQL backend on at least one system Yep. 